On today's show, rumours abound that suggest the Tesla Semi is just about to enter into volume production. Tesla officially begins offering full self-driving as a subscription service, but there is a catch. And a team of researchers at TU Graz debut a robotic charging assistant that could, maybe, make charging a whole lot easier for disabled drivers. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we're the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in New Zealand. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. It's been four years since Tesla unveiled the Tesla Semi, and in the intervening time, we've had several missed deadlines for the big Class 8 big rig. First, 2019, then 2020, and this year, 2021. But according to several sources, Tesla is rumoured to have completed its drive axle production line at Giga Reno and is going through the final debugging process of the Tesla Semi General Assembly line. If these rumours as are true, we could see initial Tesla Semi production commence in the next month or two, but we're not expecting huge production volumes just yet. It's expected that just five Tesla Semis will be completed every week by the end of this year, partly because of the sheer size of each vehicle. It's worth remembering, too, that this production line may not be the Semi's permanent home, as Giga Texas will likely take over Semi production when it's finished. There's been lots of talk in the automotive world about the tipping point at which electric vehicles are more popular than internal combustion engine vehicles. Norway, of course, has already hit that point, though few countries are close to matching that. But in the UK, leasing and fleet management company Zenith says it crossed that point in June, with more battery electric vehicle orders submitted for company car leases than internal combustion engine ones. Granted, company car leasing represents only part of a wider automotive vehicle sales market, but given the popularity of company car and salary sacrifice car schemes in the UK, where employees can sacrifice part of their pay packet to get a great company car lease, EVs, thanks to the tax savings they offer, are a no-brainer. Here's hoping that with more electric company cars coming onto the road, an increase in private EVs will follow. Sticking with Europe, Thomas Ulbrich, head of Volkswagen brand development, said this week that stricter emissions regulations due to come into force across the EU in the next few years will make petrol and diesel cars less profitable than EVs. The new engine emission standards, known as Euro 7, are the toughest yet and will require automakers to jump through some pretty large hoops to make compliant ICE vehicles. And the cost of trying to comply will just eat some of the automakers' usual profit margins, meaning making and selling EVs rather than Euro 7 ICE vehicles will be a no-brainer. And since all automakers are in the business of making money, I'm going to put my cynical hat on and predict they'll suddenly be far more interested in making EVs than they once were. Following the rollout of FSD V9 Beta to its fleet of beta program test participants last week, not to mention the positive feedback from those participants as to functionality, Tesla opened the order books for FSD subscriptions this week. To become an FSD subscriber, you'll need to pay $199 or equivalent every month. And if you have a Tesla with V2.5 or older autopilot hardware in it, you'll also need to pay to have Tesla's upgrade to your car autopilot hardware. Tesla was originally asking customers $1,500 to do the upgrade, but after backlash has lowered that to $1,000. While you'll be able to subscribe to FSD, you won't actually get to use FSD yet as it's not out of beta. But you will get advanced autopilot, which includes things like automatic lane change and more. Rivian has long been rumoured to be working on expanding its production facilities around the world, and this week we learned via Reuters that it's actively been looking to build a second production facility in the US, and may be about to announce where that will be. Citing documents submitted to state economy development officials as of a plant codenamed Project Terra, something Reuters says is Rivian's internal codename for a new production facility, the news agency says that Rivian is due to notify the successful state, there have been several it's been courting, sometime this summer. 
The facility will include a new research and development centre, expanded additional production facilities for the R1D and R1S, and a 50 gigawatt hour cell production line that will be opened in stages. Watch this space. One of the world's largest mining operations, BHP, has been in the news not once but twice this week, first due to a rumour midweek that suggests executives are looking to end its participation in the oil and gas industry. Having been in the oil and gas industry since the 1960s and with assets in the Gulf of Mexico and off the coast of Australia, that's big news alone, but perhaps equally as big is the news that it's just signed a massive deal with Tesla to become a major supplier of nickel. According to the company's official press release, it will supply Tesla with nickel from its Nickel West facility in Western Australia, which it claims is one of the world's most sustainable and lowest carbon emissions nickel production facilities. There's no mention of total yield, but given Tesla's annual production goals, it's believed to be pretty substantial. In keeping with the fondness that the financial and the automotive EV startup world seems to have for reverse mergers with special purpose acquisition companies, or SPACs for short, we've had a never-ending stream of stories about them this year. Now we've got two more to add to the list, Lucid and Faraday Future. Lucid announced midweek that its merger between it and Churchill Capital Corp 4 CCIV has been approved by shareholders. It will begin trading next week on the NASDAQ under the LCID ticker, even though it hasn't yet shipped any cars. Faraday Future, meanwhile, which frankly we'd given up on as dead, actually started trading on the stock market this week after its successful SPAC. It says the merger will mean it can get its FF91 into production, but honestly, after seven years of not much but promises, I'm doubtful. Nobody likes having their car written off after an accident. Dealing with the insurance company getting repair estimates filed isn't anyone's idea of fun. But now the ABI, that's the Association of British Insurers, wants to help bring some good out of the bad. As part of a drive towards decarbonising the automotive industry, it wants insurance firms to encourage drivers to make more sustainable choices after their car has been totaled in an accident. This could include enabling or incentivising customers to switch to a comparable electric vehicle after their car has been written off. It also wants insurers to encourage the development of a sustainable secondary market for EVs, better deal with written off EVs, to ensure better recycling and handling of components, and it also wants insurance and long-term savings firms to invest more than £1 trillion sterling into green infrastructure. This could be an interesting one to watch. For a really long time, we've heard naysayers of electric vehicles state that it's impossible to transition the world's fleet to electric because it would just bring down the electrical grid. We've long debunked that for personal passenger vehicles, but now a new study from the US's National Renewable Energy Laboratory has shown that around 80 to 90% of the US's short-haul transportation fleet, currently serviced by diesel trucks, could be replaced by electric ones all rapid charging with no required upgrades to their local electricity substations. Charge those trucks from lower power charging stations, such as you'd get from overnight charging, and even fewer modifications to the electrical grid would be required. And that's fantastic news! In the last couple of years, we've seen lots of different exciting new EV companies come to market, all eager to make a difference in the EV world. And the same is now true in the electric aviation world, thanks to companies all willing to bring VTOL services to market. But this week we learned that one of them, electric vertical takeoff and landing specialist Lilium, which has been heavily invested in by companies like Daimler, is allegedly running out of cash. The company has reportedly amended its 2019 balance sheet to state that its continued existence is at risk, and now it says that it will run out of money by the end of next year unless it can successfully complete its upcoming reverse merger. Watch this space. And finally, the act of plugging in your electric car to recharge it might seem like a simple one. After all, if everything is working as it should, the whole process can take less than a minute. But for those who have disabilities and so are either unable to handle a heavy charge cable or find reaching the charging station physically difficult, the need to plug in their car could prevent them from going electric. 
which is where TU Graz, working with Austrian companies Alveri and RT Robots, come in. They've developed a fully autonomous mobile charging robot that can find a parked electric car, open the charge port door, and just plug in. The robots are not only great for helping assistance for drivers with disabilities and charging their EV, but could also provide charging assistance to large fleets who want to go all electric. Plus, it's far less scary than those dancing dog robots that you know will one day rule the world's battlefields. Yeah. No. <laughs> and on that note, we are done for the day. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And if you haven't already switched, please do consider switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. It is super easy to make the switch. And when you do, you'll be helping New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back soon with more great videos for you all to enjoy. But until then, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakita. See you next time.